Good morning, folks. We've talked a lot about cosmic jets and their function in the universe, especially in the star water context. But when a star is born shrouded in dust and gases, those jets can create a tremendously beautiful cosmic splendor known as a Herbig Haro object. Good article about them here. Also got an interesting one that relates to both the agro worries of a solar-driven climate shift and issues feeding the masses. It's outside the GMO solution discourse. Also got a great article published in Geology. The study is all about understanding pyroclastic blasts and the heat shocks that race away at hundreds of miles per hour. Very cool. Skipped a day reporting on the storm near Madagascar. He didn't like it and churned up some power. The East Coast may yet take a glancing effect from those arms. Meanwhile, the biggest storm on Earth just hit the Northwest Australian coastline. At this point, there's little for us to do but thank the fact that there's less population there, then wait for the reports from folks that are there. Let's swing up to Europe. Same story as the past few weeks now. The convergence lines on those storms are looking more like hook arms of a massive system. Met only goes so far. Let's get some local Euro weather shares in the comment section today. Big high pressure in the central states and another on the west coast, leaving Florida and the north into Canada as seeing their expected precipitation phase for this time of year. Now we look at the solar wind. Drop-offs at the end showing easing of power with no geomagnetic instability. Even the proton flux is almost all the way down. We did indeed have some small CMEs yesterday that we said were coming to Earth, and now we have both NASA's Enlil Spiral in agreement with a little impact to Earth, most missing, and NOAA's Enlil Spiral confirms that minor impact from those events as well. Furthermore, the Sun took a night off when keeping with the shutdown patterns, but a complex grouping is heading for the limb with potential to cause more polar radiation storms if we get a limb flare, and even though the trailing sunspot group is fading fast, I still spot a double delta group in the central development of that middle active region. The potential for flaring is as evident as the coming planetary conjunctions to kick off the new year. Five celestial objects mingling beside a celestial tightrope. The top quake factor right now, however, is the Earth-facing coronal hole. The fields never closed and likely aren't going to close. The power has dropped a bit, making our watch score 7 to 8 as opposed to just a solid 8, but don't rethink a darn thing about this extended watch just yet. We sometimes begin to see these inexplicable seafloor jolts in the buoy system. They're never shown in surface volatility, but often precede the shakes. I pulled up every 5.4 quake or higher for the first 27 days of December when there were no major watches. Only 23 such quakes, or less than one per day. But we've had six of them in the last 48 hours alone. And one of the best uptick signatures we've had is a 5.2 that doesn't make that list, but is only the second five-pointer this year in Italy, and ties the biggest of the year in that location. The sunspot group center disc could give us another M flare today, but X's are unlikely. I'm not second guessing this quake watch one bit, but I am eyeing some of the plasma filaments spinning into the earth facing position. See if you can spot them in the shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear at 625 AM Eastern time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.